Okay, so um, so this is going to be a, a, I guess, an instructional, demonstrational uh, video of how to use Ocean Data View (ODV) um, to produce a, a temperature salinity plot like the one you see here. So um, a, f a few of you uh, have come to me with some problems about how you've been importing your data into ODV and have been unable to kind of like figure out how to to get it to look uh, kind of nice and how to label up uh, the plot like this one is here. Um, so this is uh, using the data from um, Locketiv in um, 2011. So this is you, know, you should be able to produce something that looks like this with your data. So I'm just going to go through the steps of how you can produce something that looks a little bit like this. So it's got um, got the isopycnals on. Uh, it's labelled up some of the um, uh, the profiles with a different symbol. I've got a key for that. Um, uh, and I guess, kind of less importantly, there's a there's a little map here, but I um, won't go into the, too much of the details of that. Okay, so this can be a bit tricky. Um, there are a number of pitfalls, um, so hopefully I'll, I'll point those out as we go along. So uh, before, I guess, rather than kind of use one I've prepared earlier, I'll start from scratch. So I'll just start with a new uh, collection. Um, so I would point out here that there are a number of ways to start ODV. Um, you can just kind of drag your data file onto the Ocean Data View desktop, and that, in some cases, will work. Um, a number of people have, have tried that and been successful, um, but there have been some instances where it kind of gets a little bit confused about where date each station begins and which station ends. Um, so uh, it's, it's best practice to, to do it this way, where we create a collection, that we give it a file that has some data in it, but importantly, it has all of the headers in the file, um, uh, and then and then separately import the data in, even if it's from the same file. And this seems to have better results. Um, so actually, before we before we before we move on, I'll just just cancel that, and um, we'll just have a look at um, at uh, one of the data files. So I'll just uh, does that work? Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, so this is oh, this here. Is the um, is the data file? So you can see here we've got uh, a row of headers, okay. Uh, and if you just want to plot up the the data from the CTD profiles, this is all you need. Um, but if you are going to want to later on import the data from the discrete chemistry measurements that we made, uh, you're going to need to add some extra uh, column headers along here, okay, for maybe nitrate. Uh, three, you might want to put in there. Oh, you might want to put phosphate in there. Phosphate, you might want to put um, chlorophyll in there as well. Um, if you're going to use ODV to plot those things up, you don't need to. You can do those ones in Excel. Um, but uh, just to point out that the file you initially create the collection with has to have all of the headers that you will use, even if you don't yet have the data for those. Anyway, back to Ocean Data View. So first of all, we need to tell it what kind of data we're going to be getting. So we're going to create a new collection, create a new collection, and give it a name. Uh, in this case, I'll call it Alex Sample TS, or well, you, I guess it's not just going to be for TS plots, but uh, we give it some, some name. And uh, we're going to we're going to basically going to be using a text file to define that. So they just click the top one there. And uh, the text file that we've got is this one I've placed on the desktop here. Uh, Oban 2017 CTD data up. So uh, you might not have the .odv file yet, but just use the, the the text file. The text file that's uploaded onto Learn. That's the kind of the raw data. That's the one you want to be using. So just open that one. So this lists all of these column labels. So if you've added some more into that data file, they'll appear down here. Um, and you don't really need to worry about this stuff over here for the moment at the moment, but this basically makes sure that the, these are the variables that it's looking for. So it must have a cruise variable that's high associated with this value in the spreadsheet. It must have longitude. It's worth checking that longitude and latitude have been associated the right way around. Um, bottom depth. Uh, so that's a very important one for when you're drawing sections. Make sure that that is actually associated with bottom depth in the spreadsheet. And then you've got your data variables here as well. Okay, so temperature, salinity, oxygen, things like that. Okay, so click OK then. You don't really need to change anything. Um, 
I think this mostly works if you just click OK here, but it's good practice just to change those into the right uh, thing. So ocean, profiles, and make the primary variable uh, depth. This will make some of the plots easier uh, later on. So if you click OK now, you can see that uh, it's created a map of the world, but it's not imported any data. So if I just zoom in, so I right click on the map, zoom, and then I zoom into Scotland, which is here for those geographically challenged, press enter to accept. You can see that we've got a map of Scotland here. I might have a slightly higher resolution uh, coastline that, than, than you have. But, uh, you can see here in Locket if there's no data. So I'll just zoom in a little bit more so we can really see our study area. Oop. Zoom in a little bit more. Zoomy, look, zoom, zoom. Okay. And you can see that there's no data has been imported. Okay, that's because all we've done is created the collection. We need to now import the data. So if you go to import, ODV spreadsheet, and again, we're just looking for a text file. So we could have you know, all files, some crazy formats, but we're just looking for a .txt, click OK. And then, so these are the, um, the variables that are in the file that I've just selected, and this is where it's going to associate them in our database. And it's worth just checking that they all associate across correctly across with each other. Um, if they don't, you can fix that um, and just click OK. OK. And now you can see that it has imported the stations we're interested in. OK, so now we've got the data in to ODV. We're going to see if we can uh, plot a, um, a simple uh, TS diagram. So if we go to Window Layouts um, and to One Scatter. And it's important you use scatter for a temperature salinity plot, uh, otherwise you won't be able to plot the isopic nulls. So if we go to a scatter window, I'll just zoom into that map a little bit more so we can actually see what's going on. Zoom right into where our data are. Um, so we need to plot across the x-axis here. Uh, the x variable needs to be uh, salinity. And the uh, y-axis needs to be um, potential temperature. Now you can see here that it's plotted all the data. We've got our, our all our data plotted as effectively versus depth. Uh, not particularly useful plot this as it is because we can't distinguish one station from another. Um, but at least it shows us that the data has been imported uh, correctly, and there's no kind of crazy, crazy spurious data points flying around all over the shop. Um, so first of all, we need to create um, that. Uh, uh, variable of potential temperature, and if, you, if we click on our Y variables, we can see that it's not one of the variables we have, um, so we need to create it. Um, so we just cancel that. And if we just go to View, Derive Variables, which allow us to calculate various parameters from the data that we have. Uh, if you have the option, click on uh, the Physical Properties TEOS 10, and this gives us a list of physical parameters that ODV can calculate. You won't, might not be able to calculate all of these. Um, because we might not have the right or enough data, um, but we can select potential temperature, we can add that, uh, and it's then going to ask for the things that it needs. So depth in the water column, depth. Temperature is this TV290C, excuse me, and the practical salinity, salinity sal 00, those. Reference pressure, so uh, we basically want the potential temperature if that water was raised to the surface, so the pressure zero. And now we have this defined uh, potential temperature variable. So if we then select our Y variable, we now have this option of potential temperature uh, that we can pick. Yay! Um, so this now gives us a, a temperature salinity prop, which you may be familiar with. We can kind of start to kind of tart this up a little bit, make it look nice. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these horrible grid lines, which I have an irrational hate of. Um, so we go to properties, and this gives us the properties for this plot. So I can uh, change things about how the displays, the, the data displays, symbol size, all that kind of stuff. But if you go to the, the general tab, get rid of draw grid, and that gives those data there. That's pretty nice. Um, so depending on what you're trying to use this plot to show, um, you can kind of, you can add a third dimension to this plot, you can shade these points by colour if you if you really wanted to. Um, to do that, you click a Z variable, and then you can give it a colour. So maybe if I were to click depth, 
Um, uh, click OK. So this this tells me that the, the shallow points are all over in this part of the diagram, and the deep points are kind of like down here. It's not a particularly helpful plot. This, in, in some regards, there are other things you might want to plot on a z variable that might help uh, you distinguish one water mass from another with regards to different uh, parameters, but um, but this isn't particularly useful. But if we go back to the, the plot that I we were perhaps thinking of at the beginning, where we just want to label some of these with uh, their stations. Okay, So the way to do that in ODV is to add uh, graphics objects. Okay, So ideally we just want to maybe draw a line between all of these points uh, for each station. So to do that, if we right click on the plot, click on extras, and we want to add some graphics objects we want to add symbol sets so down the bottom so graphic object symbol set okay so this brings up this window which allows us to choose the data that we want to use to plot those symbols um, so we've only got one cruise worth of data so we can select that cruise if we had data from multiple cruises we'd select which cruise we wanted um, and then we have all of the profiles we're interested in here so I'm going to just select a few of those now, at this point, you can use kind of shift to select multiple profiles, but if you do that, then that will create a single kind of set of symbols for those group of stations and will try and join the bottom to the top of each station. So you'll get a horrible kind of spidery mess when you try and draw in lines between them. So just select them one at a time and add them to the plot that you, you want. Okay. So in this case, I'm just adding maybe we'll, we'll go through and do them all all of the stations from the transect click through those and two more so I think that's 12 stations in total we click OK and now it's going to ask us what how it wants to plot those what color the symbols want to be so when we do this it'll give them all the same color which initially is useless uh, but we can then go in and change those one by one once we've made the plot. Um, so actually I'm going to select um, uh, a dot but I actually don't want it to plot the dots I just want there to be a line between all of the data so I'm going to make my fiddle colour none, my pen width oh, oh, pen colour none, pen width, there we go, none so it's not going to plot the dots at all but it is going to plot a line between those points and I want a nice maybe a medium line uh, and let's have a I don't know, let's for no reason have a dotted line just just because, uh, actually not, let's have a solid line um, don't click the pre-data plot, it's important that it's uh, clipped to the window so if you resize the window it'll 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 be resized, you do not want to allow it to be dragged around the plot because it's data uh, and uh, yeah so at the moment we'll just leave the uh, the colour as well. Let's leave put the colour as, as blue. Click OK, and you can see now that it's given each of the the um, the stations. It's coloured in the line between the points. Where it's drawn the line between the points, and those are in blue. And we've got a nice key up here, which we can drag around. So that's nice, but again, it's not particularly useful because they're all the same. They're completely in, in, in they're, they're quite hard to um, spot. Um, so what I'm going to do here is go in and say right click on the plot, go to extras and now manage my graphics objects and you can see here that it's got a, uh, a list of all of the, the things that are drawn in the plot and I can go to each one of the symbol sets that we've just drawn, say uh, T12 and edit that and I might make that one um, green and the next one I might make slightly less green um, and you can go through very easily and just change these systematically okay and I've uh, what I've done here is I've just changed the colors of all the stations from T12 to T7 so these are the ones in the uh, I guess the outer basin the Aird's Bay um, examples so to distinguish the, the two um, basins, I might want to plot these slightly differently. So I'll when we're now into T6, which I think is, is this one, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, 
I'll go in and make that. Uh, uh, different colour again, but instead of being solid line, I'll make it a dotted line. Why not? And uh, make a dotted line and okay, and make this one have a dotted line again. Uh, where are we up to? Maybe 12. Colors. Um, I guess because we're doing dotted, we can go back to the beginning. Okay, and a dotted line. Okay, so if we click OK now, you can see now that we've got a bunch of different uh, lines on here. We've basically got the solid lines uh, from T12 to T7 dashed lines from T1 to T6 okay in different colors for each of the points so that's that's nice and fine okay we might want to add now to the map those symbols and you do it in exactly the same way uh, you go to uh, extras uh, this time first of all obviously clicking right clicking on the map extras add graphics objects symbol set and uh, just that we're going to do exactly the same thing so just add those in as we were uh, okay you see that's added those in it's given another key which is kind of slightly annoying um, but we can we can hide that um, later on uh, just move it out of shot um, so just like that you then go in and amend those um, graphics points to, to change the, the colors to the ones that you've, you've put are uh, used on your plot here it's a good idea to then keep this kind of next to this one so you can just check that you've actually color coded them the same on each key okay and then you might put one on top of the other so you can't kind of see them. okay so um, I'll stop. I'll stop there. So hopefully this this has um, this has uh, this has showed you how you can go about. Um, oh, I, I just put the isopic nozzle on, won't I? Did I take those off? Put those on. Um, so extras uh, isopic nozzles. Uh, okay, there are isopic nozzles back. Um, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to produce a plot something like this uh, if you want to. You don't have to plot all of the data on here. Um, it might make sense to plot some kind of background data but then just highlight one or two profiles that show the thing that you're trying to demonstrate um, if you do want to hide some of the the data that so for instance these uh, these data here which are from the air, the the, the Aird's Bay and the innovation sections or profiles that were done on different days to the, the transect um, you can go in and make all of the data that was I guess plotted as the background kind of disappear. If you go to properties for that plot, so that's just uh, right click on the plot, go to properties, go to um, display style, and where it says original data, uh, instead of having we have some colored dots, but we could make them none. So there's no, no color, doesn't matter how big they're, uh, so they won't be plotted there. So you can see that the, the data is still there. Okay, if you click on that, that station is data is still there, but it's not um, not shown. Okay. Right, so that's plotting uh, a uh, TS diagram. Very important that you import your data correctly, so you create the ODV collection, then you import the data into it. Um, and when you want to plot the TS plot, you must plot it as a scatter plot, not a station plot, uh, because uh, that allows you to put the isopignals on and these are useful I mean just looking at this plot here you should be able to figure out which of the temperature or salinity is responsible for the variations in, in density in this setting um, and you can then 
show the different uh, kind of stations by adding a symbol set, okay, which allows you to colour in the points as you go. Okay, right, I will stop there, and um, yeah, I've probably already said I'll stop there, but this is really stopping, so here we go, stopping. Uh, stop.